What was once a beautiful desert has been turned into a mucky swamp. But on day 41, the rain stopped. The land animals have moved to higher ground, so the aquatic animals took over. Some are cute, others not so much. But one thing is for certain, do not fall in the water. I give you Amphibia. It all started with a 150 gallon used fish tank. It was covered in calcium and water spots, so I had to do a thorough cleaning. Then I made sure it held water. I make all my rocks out of foam board. It's a long process, but it's well worth it in the end. Using dry lock, I'm able to waterproof it and give it some color and definition. A lot of people have asked, did I flood the last tank and kill all the animals? Yes, what's up? I'm just kidding. No, I did not. This is a completely different tank. This pipe will be used for housing the pump and the water filter. I also installed a bubbler tube for the fish as well as a submersible light to go in the cave. The process is very similar to all my other builds. Spray foam, planters, bark. I use brown, odor-free, 100% silicone. So in case I miss a spot, the brown still blends in with the design. This build took two weeks, and I'll list everything I used in the description for those of you who are curious. This cork log is hollowed out and provides a hideout for the land creature that's about to go in. Multiple plants were used to make this swamp come alive. My suggestion is to use plants that love to be waterlogged, as everything will be wet all the time. The lid is made up of used 2x4s with two screen doors and a centerpiece for the misting system. I'll show you more on this later. For a substrate, I mix organic garden soil with river rock. Then I place root tabs where I'll be planting aquatic plants. For a better understanding on aquatic plants, check out Oliver's Aquatic Garden. He grows plants for a living and is a lot better at it than I am. I'll leave a link in the description. I did an assortment of sword plants, ferns, and lilies, which won't bloom in time for this video, but they're there. I also painted dusk moss in various places. This will take about six months to grow. Water lettuce, duckweed, and frog bit make up the floating plants. Now let's go catch some feeder fish so our amphibians can eat. So we got us some chicken liver and some dog food. Yeah, go on down there. I don't know.
a little fella. Now, this is how the tank will function automatically. On the left side, I have two LED lights with built-in timers to mimic day and night. A fan that kicks on when humidity gets too high. A window AC to control the room temp. Six misting nozzles built on a barometer that will go off when it gets too dry. Which so far has been about every five hours. As well as a fog machine that works incredible. On the right is a fluval light that creates thunderstorms and other nature features. I put hinges on the lids for easy access and everything is connected to a surge protector. This pump controls the misters and gets its water from this bucket so the tank never loses its water level. The first creatures will be these fish. They are just for looks and fertilizing the plants. I also found this cool beetle and placed them in there as well as this tadpole. What will this tadpole turn into? Now, meet Morpheus, the axolotl's hillbilly cousin, the water dog. And this is Crush, the snapping turtle. And this is a worm on a cliff. He is getting dangerously close to the edge. So I helped him out and gave him a little push. The water creatures immediately respond and Crush is going in to introduce himself. He separates the worm into two so he can share with Morpheus. But Morpheus has other plans. He bites and scares Crush to leave the area so he has the worm all to himself. But all this commotion has awakened Bruce, the king of Amphibia. Bruce is a red swamp crawfish in his fully matured state. One thing to know about Bruce is he's fast and does not share. And Crush is about to find out on his own. With his killer entrance song, he makes his way to the food stash. And then sticks his nose right into the claw of the crawfish to show he's not afraid. Crush is standing his ground, so Bruce punches him in the nose. But that doesn't stop him. So Bruce takes it up a notch with the suplex and Crush scurries away. Now Morpheus wants to try. So Bruce puts on his fighting face and pinches him. And it's over. One hour later, Morpheus returns to eat the scraps Bruce left behind. He sniffs the ground like a dog to track down the worms. Bingo. Morpheus will not go to bed hungry today. Other creatures have their own way of getting food, like this baby crawdad. He sneaks in and takes the whole stash back to his cave, leaving behind crumbs for the fish. But can he finish it before Morpheus shows up? When nighttime arrives, he makes his move to get more food. But Morpheus goes into beast mode. And somehow the little guy gets out alive with just a tail hit. Morpheus then enjoys the spoils of the victory. Now the swamp started turning red, so a water change was in effect. Now fast forward 10 days and Bruce is acting weird. He
He's been climbing onto land and staying there. I've even seen him on top of the waterfall. Perhaps he's looking for a place to burrow for the winter. And now it's time to add a land predator to keep Bruce in his place. Meet Lizzie. The Baskalis. When fully grown, this guy morphs into a green dragon that doesn't breathe fire. Lizzie will patrol the canopy and keep it safe from outside invaders like crickets. Remember this guy? I still don't know what it is, but it really doesn't matter because this was the last time we will ever see him alive. Now something incredible is about to happen. The tadpole is going to morph into a bullfrog and Morpheus is going to full out transform into in the next video. <laughs>